Hello, and welcome back to the Six Five Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners at Futurum Research, and my team and I at Futurum and the team at More Insights and Strategy are really glad that you're here. In this fireside chat discussion today, Futurum's Daniel Newman sits down with Otho Lyon from Cloudera, and they're going to talk about customer experience as a service in the public sector and what that means for digital transformation across industries as a whole. Founded in 2008, headquartered in Silicon Valley, Cloudera is comprised of some of the brightest minds in technology. And they're passionate about open source, open standards, and open markets. The company's commitment is to empowering people to transform complex data into clear and actionable insights, making infinite things possible. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm looking for, making infinite things possible. So without further ado, let's pop over and listen to this conversation and see what we can learn. Otho Lyon, welcome to the 6-5 Summit. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Dan. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You know, I, I got to say, I love the shirt. You look uh, you look great. Great minds think alike, right? <laughs> yeah, I feel like we had to coordinate this. Um, someone must have told you that, that that blue is a great color for camera. I, I had someone kind of guide me on that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's good. I have people guide me. I've been doing this for years, and I still have people that tell me where to sit, how to sit, where to face, what to say. It's all good stuff. It makes us all better every single day. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm super excited to have you on the uh, Six Five Summit with us. You know, it's a great session ahead. Public sector is a topic that doesn't always get the front and center attention in a lot of these tech events, but boy, is the public sector a big client when it comes to technology. So I'm, I'm really excited to dig into that with you. Um, but, you know, I would love to have you just take a minute, Otho, and just do a quick introduction of yourself and, and, and even more a quick introduction of Cloudera for anyone out there that's not familiar. Because while I, I track it closely and I've had a lot to say about it, um, not necessarily a household name yet. So how about that quick intro and then, and then we'll dive into the topic at hand. Hey, yeah, thanks, thanks, Dan. Um, you know, Otho Lyon, I'm a director of public sector uh, and global programs for Cloudera. And if you don't know Cloudera, Cloudera is an edged AI, big data analytics uh, company. Um, you know, I've been at Cloudera for about four years, but we we provide you know the solutions for for big data and companies that that absolutely have a lot of data out there. And the federal government is one of those those agencies and governments that have a lot of data. They really do. Yeah, that's, a, that's great. And it's uh, not only is it a really large player, it's actually now the product of two of the largest players in the uh, open source big data space uh, when, when you guys came together with Hortonworks. And, and that's not an old story. Um, right. And actually, you've had the, the, the CEOs come back, Bob, Robert Bearden. Uh, yep. The company's doing a lot of things. And uh, there's been a lot of excitement around the company over the last few months. I've been tracking that really closely. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk about sort of what's going on in the public sector, the federal government, and just this whole public sector space. It's gotten a lot of attention over the past several months. We've had some very interesting things going on around uh, the, the, the country here, uh, around the world, but certainly here in the U.S. And government, uh, it's kind of, it's a 24-hour news cycle, and it certainly keeps everybody's attention. Yeah. Um, but data, you know, we've got a pandemic, we've got, uh, you know, a a, a uh, ongoing conversation about driving uh, equality. Uh, these are things that the government is trying to do and, and data is gonna be really at the root of it in terms of making decisions and you're working on that. And in fact, Cloudera has really been instrumental working with a number of agencies, federally, locally. Um, you know, Talk a little bit about how Cloudera was able to establish itself. How, how have you guys been able to become so influential and, and important to the public sector uh, and what they're doing? Sure, sure, Dan. Let's, so let's first talk about, you know, the U.S. federal government, right, and and the, the government's data strategy. You know, uh, back in June 2019, uh, President Trump established, you know, that, that federal da data strategy. And, you know, his the vision is to, you know, help deliver, you know, data to, in the 21st century. And, you know, the government's mission is fully, fully leverage all that federal data that, you know, to its missions, to the services, you know, in an ethical and a conscientious design and in a learning culture, right? And so, um, you know, a couple of the uh, mandates that President Trump has uh, put out there is IT modernization, 
uh, data accountability and uh, people, you know, the future workforce. So, you know, we are talking about how much data that's out there. You know, I was, I was looking in there, and there's numbers out there, but the one that stuck out to me was there's 2.5 quintillion bytes of data uh, is, uh, it happens per day. And the government is uh, considerably one of the largest generators of all that data. So, you know, one of the things I've seen is, you know, Cloudera has been able to help government agencies. You know, the, the thing I, I see a lot of people talk about cloud, right? And, they, and when they think cloud, they lump it all together. But I think agencies need to start looking at having a cloud strategy. They also need to talk, look at having a data strategy. And, and it's something that uh, you know, a lot of agencies really don't get into. So Cloudera has been able to help uh, agencies think about their data. What, you know, what is, you know, the one thing I think about data is, what is the storytelling? You know, when people you know put data together and say, hey, "Well, here's your data," but what is the data telling you? What is the story uh, behind that data? So you know, it's it, it's very interesting because you know we kind of fall into um, you know some of those um, I, I lanes when it comes to uh, you know helping the government really figure out the you know the strategy here. You know, whether it's security whether it's privacy, you know, or it's confidentiality. You know, we have all those tools. You know, SDX is one of our tools that we use that, that plays into that, right? And so, you know, you know, helping the government to really understand how to manage this data. Because, you know, we did a survey uh, back in May, and 94% of uh, federal IT managers, you know, say they are uh, focused on, on data, and it's, it's significant, and they're going to focus even more. But, you know, then 90% believe that, you know, Data should be, you know, robust across, you know, all data sets. But here's the the, the, the challenge is only 51% of them have any governance policy. So, you know, now you, you still have data that's siloed, right? And that's the challenge, you know, governments, you know, having data that's siloed. That, you know, you can't use it, you know, if agencies can't share data, we've had that this 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 conversation before, right? So now we're, you know, as, at Cloud Air, we're able to help them with that. And, and some of that is, you know, I mentioned before, you know, our XDX to get them out of these silos and help them, you know, try to share data across platforms and and you know, obviously, when you start doing that, you start governments get real concerned about security, they get real concerned about you know confidentiality and those things. But Cloud Air is positioning itself to be be able to do that. So, yeah, you covered a lot of ground there, but a lot of interesting things. I mean, the data initiative at the federal level is significant and it's material. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that we need systems that help us get more accuracy. Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, I mentioned the, the pandemic, but that's just one example. But the reason I bring that up is so much of the reason that we are struggling to come up with a federal policy, I think has to do with data um, that needs to continue to be enriched and provide more clarity and provide answers with less scrutiny and less manipulation. And right. that's where things like ML and AI come into play. That's where having real time, the, like data at the edge, being able to be added in real time to be processed, you know, um, having neural, neural networks and frameworks and deep learning that can continue to enrich the algorithms to make sure it gets narrower and narrower. And, right. and we're still working towards it. And I would generally say, to your credit and to the technology industry, it's usually not the industry that's slow. Uh, usually it's the right. industry trying to uh, meet the customer where it is. And in many cases with uh, with public sector, it still lags a little bit behind what the technology is able to support. Um, you know, let's, let's bounce into the next topic though. Uh, I mentioned Cloudera. Obviously there's a lot of companies in data, but open source has, has been really hot. You mentioned about, uh, cloud strategies and data strategies. Well, in cloud, everybody sort of is starting to see open source and application development. But when it comes to data, there's a big story behind being open source as well. And that's really where Cloudera has put a lot of its, its muscle. Um, why has open source been a, a, a vehicle to be more valuable to public sector than a lot of other maybe closed loop, closed architecture and other data platforms that, that are, are, are good, but aren't open source? Right. Well, you know, open source enables, you know, that rap rapid activation, you know, of new technology, right? Um, you know, the, the government, um, you, you, you stated before, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of one of those things where, 
you, the pub, private sector is kind of moving a little bit ahead of the government when it comes to a lot of this data, you know, the analytics and, you know, technology and things of nature. And so, you know, open source within the government, you know, I think the government needs to recognize that it needs to be agnostic, right? You know, especially when it comes to cloud and compute and storage. You know, you want those environments that are that are open storage and open compute because it then it kind of, it, it, it creates a, a non- um, or it creates a, a, a vendor lock-in, right, if you don't do it, right? And, and one thing I've known about the government, you know, the government wants this interoperability, you know, and, you know, in order to do that, you know, environment, and if you want to optimize your environments, you know, from whether it's hybrid or multi-cloud, you know, or if you want to have, uh, you know, the multiple analytical functions, um, you know, you need to be able to have the, that open environment, right? And that's where, you know, you, you're seeing, if you notice, you're seeing um, uh, open source start to, you know, it is a buzzword, it's starting to rise up in, even in, you know, you're talking about smart cities, right? Or um, municipalities that are using, you know, open source, you know, to gain intelligence. And because right now you have all this IoT data, right? And this IoT data is is, is powerful, but unless you're able to, to be agile and make those adjustments, and, and drive those intelligent conversations or decisions, you know, it's going to be difficult. Think about a, a city now, you know, you got cities now that, you know, are monitoring real time traffic and, um, you know, high parking volumes. And, and, you know, even um, if you look at, you know, uh, utilities and, 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 um, and things of that nature, power and water, you know, that's a lot of data that's coming in there. And then security, you know, cameras, you know, there, you can't go anywhere where there's, there's not a camera. So, you know, you look at it, you know, these types of things are are powered by open source and it, they're very agile. But one other thing that a lot of people don't even think about is, you know, these smart bases, right? I think about, uh, you know, you know, you know, Fort Bragg and some of these other agents uh, or um, bases where, you know, you have, you know, soldiers and you have, you know, the health of those soldiers and you have cooling systems, you have fleet management, you know, so all this IoT data, uh, there, you know, it's so it's so massive, but you need to be agile to be able to, to make decisions with this data. And I think open source is, is what's driving this. And so, you know, um, you know, yes, Cloudera absolutely, you know, provides that that um, that framework, in my opinion. And, you know, so we have there again, I'll go back. There's a lot of products that we have, but there's that XDX that really helps uh, agencies to be able to um, uh provide that level of where we collect the data, you enrich the data, you report that data, you serve that data, and then you can use that, that predictive analysis to figure out what you want to do with that data, and it drives you to decisions. Yeah, you, you, you had a lot to unpack there, but one thing that you did say, uh, you talked about cameras everywhere, and it, it immediately made me think about another challenge the public sector is dealing with, uh, and that's privacy. Yeah. You know, throughout this recent, um, you know, pandemic and the, the global discussion around equality, we've seen how data, AI, ML still has some issues. It still can be somewhat inaccurate with certain um, uh, computer vision, for one. You've seen a number of big tech companies sort of say, we're not going to, at this point in time, support facial recognition when it's being used for certain surveillance type activities. And that really comes down to, you know, we've got this this real battle between the, the fact that we as a society basically disclose all of our data willingly, voluntarily uh, for consumption by public sector, by corporations and everyone else. But concurrently, just because we decide to disclose it doesn't mean that we've completely waived our rights to some level of privacy. That's and right. so you're, you're really walking a balance because your technology is really an enabler. You're the enabler of of decoupling all this information, of of giving public sector uh, agencies, uh, security agencies, insights and information at a very granular level. You're also the type of technology that can take uh, big swaths of data, anonymize it, uh, de uh, depersonalize it in some capacities to make it useful for local and government agencies to provide experiences to to customers, uh, constituents, whatever. I. I think of myself as a customer, although the service isn't always great. Um, but uh, so there, there's a lot to lot to go. So that was a really long way of kind of arriving at the fact that in public sector, you guys have this balance you have to play around privacy. How are you achieving that? So you know, obviously, you know, with 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 the privacy uh, conversation, you know, 
we have to, you're right, we have to absolutely uh, walk a thin line there. Um, you know, we're being conscientious about what, you know, we, we invest in and what we will be a part of and what we won't be a part of. Um, and, you know, with our leaders, you know, we kind of take a look at, you know, things that when they come in, you know, does this, you know, uh, you know, play into our core values, right? Uh, and so, you know, and that's one of the things, you know, with this new, you know, even with the racial, the racial, you know, Black Lives Matter and things of that nature, it's changed the whole dynamic of how corporations look at, you know, what they do and what they participate in, what they won't participate in. And, and we have a good balance with, you know, our leaders within sales and our uh, CEO, Rob Beard, and we to talk about these things to determine whether or not this is something that we want to forge ahead and do or we don't want to do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a really big question. All companies are asking right now about the technology, what mm -hmm. this technology enables, because again, there's a lot of, of ways these technologies can be applied for good, for safety, for security, for uh, health, for um, you know, just enrichment in, in communities, both uh, on a local and on a federal level. So we don't want to see that get, you know, basically data is going to help us decide what data to use, but we need to make sure that we, we keep progressing with that. Um, since you brought it up, um, you know, the public sector, you know, there's, you've been advi advising this for, for a number of years. You mentioned not just here at, uh, at Cloudera, but you, you know, when we talked offline, you mentioned you did it for a longer period of time for NetApp and for other organizations, you've been around it. We're, you know, Diversity has gotten a, a big uh, spotlight on it, and it's it's been due time. It's it's a good thing. Um, you know, yourself as a as, as someone of a diversity in the workforce, yourselves, you're seeing it from from both sides. Is is it personally in, in affecting you as well as as you're helping these agencies and your work? What what are sort of your views? What are you seeing? How is it changing? Um, you know, in within the public sector in particular right now, Otho. You know, what's interesting is, uh, and it's a good question, you know, um, you know, when you, when I, you know, when you're out, when we were out in the field and, you know, able to visit, you know, agencies and things of that nature, you know, what's amazing is, you know, public sector, uh, especially a lot of the government agencies, they've kind of figured out, okay, we need to make, we need to make sure that we have a diverse workforce, right? And so when you walk into the agencies, um, you'd be surprised how well there's a blended uh, a field of uh, individuals working in different agencies. Not all, but for the most part, the ones that I've seen. I think where the challenge is, is, is you know, even trying to translate that to um, private sector, right? You know, public sector tries to adhere to, you know, what the population says. You know, if, if it's 13% here or 20%, whatever the numbers are, they try to adhere to that. And they've, they've done, in my opinion, a really good job of doing that. It's the private sector where we've had the challenges, right? And so, you know, in, in you know, my 15 years of being in public sector, uh, supporting public sector, you know, it's it, it, it has been challenging because, you know, the diversity in private sector has not necessarily been you know, where I, I would have hoped it would have been by now. But, you know, you're right. Now's the time for us to try to make a change here. Um, you know, you know, Cloud Air is actually doing a couple of initiatives. I actually work on what we call the Equality Committee uh, within uh, Cloud Air, and I report directly to Rob Bearden. And we're working on some, some initi initiatives that are internal as well as external. And I'm excited about that uh, because I think, you know, now it's an opportunity for us to really – you know, uh, change the pendulum and and really make a, a, a long lasting legacy for the next generation. Because that's the thing now we're fighting for the next generation. Yeah, I'm, I'm 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 really glad that we had a chance to kind of touch on that. I think it's really timely right now. You know, I think uh, sometimes in tech, uh, the the industry as a whole. Uh, can sort of breeze by on some of the more difficult topics because we're so busy doing all the cool stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, we're we're the ones enabling all these video meetings and we're the ones enabling, um, you know, all the gaming, all the Netflix binge watching, all the things that we did to stay distracted amongst the pandemic, even all the watching that we did about what was going on with the equality conversations. Right. But at the same time, you know, we really are responsible to be the leaders in these discussions to, you know, these companies, yours, uh, many of that are participating here in this summit are some of the companies that are, are the loudest voices, making some of the biggest commitments and impact both to our health 
and to our um, to our equality. So I, I, I'm I'm glad you know you were able to share some thoughts. I'm glad to hear that Cloudera is specifically doing some things. Oh, the line, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me here at the, the 65 Summit. It's great to hear all the things that you're doing and about what's going on with big data in the uh, public sector. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. And thanks, everybody, for uh, tuning into this session, and we hope you see you in the next session uh, real soon. Uh, appreciate it. For now, we're saying goodbye to this.